Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, that there is, as you can see under his picture, Chuck Farnham. Ooh, Chuck Farnham uh, really used to be hold, part of our on, morning folks. show in we, San Francisco. We ran that last night, didn't we? Oh, yeah, we ran that last night. That wasn't what I wanted to run today. See, I'm just all out of it now. This is what happens when you have a torn meniscus or whatever, you know. It makes life miserable. Makes life miserable. No, this is what we wanted to say and show and do and uh well, well why not we'll do it okay that lovely lady you see there is the lovely and attractive <laughs> me is, is there any is there anybody there with you I'm, i was referring to them <laughs> Lori thompson ladies and gentlemen yay Yay, yay! stucco coming off the ceiling as bubs would say so yeah <laughs> As Bubs, we always have, as Bubs would say, because we have so many things we can quote Bubs as saying. Yes. You know. Yeah, I, you, I thought of something that you did. We didn't do characters, you know, or any of that corny, typical morning show stuff. Yeah. But we would, once in a while, we'd have these quick personas. And I remember something you did. I think this was like you, a postal guy or something. Yeah. Morning, Mr. Bennett. <laughs> and no, yeah, that, well, that was, no, that was my parody of every morning show that has characters. Wacky characters, right? right. And I said, oh, here comes, I know, Irving the Postman. Good morning, <laughs> Mr. Bennett. That was his catchphrase. And then his phrase. outline. That was his, his outline. <laughs> is out with okie dokie yeah, right i remember that now so, uh, okie dokie yeah. yeah just all that overplayed yeah. and i worked i've worked with someone who did those characters once and some people love them i i am not one of them. well let I me don't. let me say this that i hate morning shows mm -hmm. and and i hate everything that they do with them and so when I did our show, I tried to do everything that wasn't those morning shows. And one of, yes. them, one of them were a cast of characters. Because, you know, yeah. I, can do vo I can do voices, you know. Right. Yeah, he's, you know, I am, I I am Mr. Bennett. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, just remember that when I'm doing my hair the other day and I thought of okey dokey. At one point, I was, I was trying to get into animated films as a voice, but in those days, there were only like five guys doing them and you couldn't break the, the, uh, the uh, uh, group. Uh, yeah. But, but, you know, I mean, I, I always wanted to do that. So I did lots of characters, but I wasn't about ready to do them on our show. Right. It yeah. just wasn't a fit. Yeah. So and, the, uh, my parody of it was that, you know, here comes Bob the Postman or whatever. Right. Uh, hi, Mr. Bennett. Is it, we have the mail? <laughs> yes. Well, goodbye. Okie dokie. Yeah. And then you, you know, make a big game. Uh, you know, Bob the Postman, ladies and gentlemen, because <laughs> they always do that. And, you know, on the typical morning shows. God, which I just... The things people remember about that show that I forgot completely. Oh, well, because it was new and different every day. I mean, we may have had some topics that we revisited sometimes or more often than others, but it was new every day. Well, here was, a, was well, here was another thing I did when I first went to San Francisco that I stopped doing because it was so hack, and that was the question of the day. And then people would oh. call up and answer it. That's a borderline. And I think know, I did it in the beginning to get people to call. After a while, they just were able to call, right? Yeah. You know? Because I still remember uh, some of the regulars that used to call, and what, and there were uh, there were just a bunch of them. Carby, who had emphysema and smoked while she was on oxygen, there was. I just remember a bunch of. Yeah, she died. And, uh, she died. Well, can you? What? We just thought she was going to blow herself up. We she told, mainly called on the phone. It was like, and she'd volunteer. I said, "I'll pay you cab down here." 
if you come down and so we can just visualize you. And so she came down and we saw that she was smoking like a chimney and, and had oxygen. We thought she's going to blow this place up. <laughs> so for men, it was a phone relationship after that. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but it, it, we did kind of an anti morning show, is what we did. Really? It was kind of like uh, what the Daily Show approach before there was a Daily Show. That was uh, well. Kind of I don't know if it was that. I think the Daily Show was probably an anti news show. Yes. Yeah, we were an anti morning show. Right. Yes, you know. that that's true. And I, yeah, hate, I quite point. frankly, I always hated the radio business. I mean, I hated the people in it, for the most part. You know, I hated the hacks that did morning shows. You know, the ones that immediately went into this mm -hmm. voice. You know, when you meet them, yeah. they shake your and have the right, heavy voice. Right. But yeah, I just like, well, what I knew about you before I actually worked with you, mm -hmm. that you were an iconoclast, and the things that you left me with that were very important that I retain to this day is never talk down to the audience, mm -hmm. ever, mm -hmm. and don't don't condescend, and uh, don't, uh, you know, don't discount their intelligence. Well, I always, so I always thought that they were far more intelligent then I, you know, I'm out of sync again. How does this happen? Are you? Yeah. Uh, who cares? Who cares? If I'm out of sync, just think this is a foreign film. Okay, it's been. Yeah. Done. Right. Well, are we just got a new cable box? It's a it's a remote one with no a wireless one. Yeah. And we cannot get the sync. We can't get it to sync up. So we called Fox Cable and asked, uh, "What's the deal?" And she said, "That's just a nuance of the new boxes." And it has to do with available broadband at the time. And so sometimes it's fine. And then other times, you know, uh, Ken Jennings is like two questions back on Jeopardy. It's just bizarro. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah leave it to cable companies. You know what we got? We, we pulled the, we pulled the, cut the cord. Oh, you, know? you did? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And we're, we're using uh, Hulu. Uh, really? Yeah, and it's really good, you know. Yeah, and now is is Hulu a streaming service? I see sometimes that the movies. Well, are but Hulu is a streaming service, but you can also buy the subset, which is called Hulu Plus, which gives you seventy five channels, gives you all the local oh. news channels, gives you all the news channels, gives you gives you seventy five channels. There's still more channels than you'll ever use. But, oh, but uh, and and we pay about uh, what is it ninety two dollars a month for that. So we 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 ripped out the, had them take the cable boxes back. We had we had like five or six of them in the south. Do you know you pay for every cable box? That's what I thought. Yeah, you pay yeah. for every cable box, and every cable box a month consumes eight dollars worth of electricity. You're kidding. Yeah. So I had oh I had five of them in this house. So that was eating what? up a lot of my money every month. And yeah. now I'm down to just paying for that and the uh, uh, and the high speed internet, which I would have had anyway. Right. Okay. Yeah. So the between the two of them it cost me about a hundred and eighty dollars. Well, that's compared to the, you know, two hundred and fifty dollar bill I was getting before. You know? Yeah, but just seemed to go up and up. They never Boy, went down. by the way, by the way, in that I get Disney Plus for free, I get ESPN Plus for free, and I get Hulu as part of the package, okay? Rock so, on. So really, I would have been paying for those if I had the cable. Right, right, right. All right? And Yeah. yeah. So and it's really comes out a lot cheaper all the way around. That, I would tell uh, the, my financial advisor, <laughs> husband, that uh, about that. Oh, he's your financial advisor? Is that the... He does everything. He's my trip planner. Are, are He's you, my uh, well, are you, trap. Are you, oh, by the way, I want to talk to you about trip planning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we just got what, what we've decided we're going to do, because I saw I can do it, for about $5,000 a week, Yeah. Uh, I can rent a villa. Rock on, man. In, like, man. Italy oh. or France. And I look at it, and it says 10 people. So, well, I don't want to be in a villa all by ourselves. So, you know, we no. should we, we could invite you because you guys love traveling and you can, you know how to book the travel to it and we'll get yeah. you know, we'll get ourselves a villa and invite you to it. 
Well, that would be so fun, man. That would make me feel like I was in People magazine. And I got a couple other people I want to invite, too. Marjorie has a friend she wants to invite. And, you know, uh, we, can, we can fill it up with a lot of really fun people. You know, for yeah. Me. Oh, we'd be like the Stones, the Rolling Stones, when they were recording what? What was it? Nelda, yeah. Nelda Cohote. Um, yeah, that would be some well, we're, girl. We're, we're about to come into a decent amount of money. When I don't know, but we're about to come into it. And uh, <laughs> so I said to Marjorie, I said, uh, Yeah, well, I said, you know, we'll go for a week. She says, I thought it was a month. I said, No, it's a week. She says, Well, then why don't we do a month? Well, we could spend the twenty thousand dollars and do it for a month, you know, because we yeah. we've got fu you, we got fu money, you know. Yeah. So, but uh, but I think a week's enough, you know. I yeah. uh, after a week I get a little squirrely, you know. Yeah. I want to move on. Could, yeah, I, I I'm with you there. I can go about ten days, and then when you're on like a cruise or something, or a hotel room, you know. I mean, unless it's a huge hotel room. Here we can like stay about out of each other's way if we get on each other's nerves. And, yeah, same you know, thing, same thing in, here in this apartment. Believe it or not, if we don't want to see oh, each yeah. other for a week, we don't have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. That, so that that is something to consider because I didn't realize until I was well into adulthood that I'm claustrophobic kind. of. Like uh, escal or elevators. I, don't well, bother I me. am claustrophobic. Elevators don't bother me. I don't, no, I don't they don't know, bother. I don't know why. That's not the kind. Of, what here's what. But claustrophobia uh, bothers me. Okay, ready? Ready. Uh, I will not do, uh, uh, what do you call it, a, a scan. One of those, you know. MRI. MRIs. Can't do Oh, it. really? Oh. Now, those, those don't bother me, usually because I'm thinking about, like, the broken collarbone and ribs that got me in there in the first place. Yeah, well, they can, but, they can, they can use x-rays. They can use CT scans. I can do CT scans. Yeah, I yeah. cannot do uh, uh, MRI. However, if they have an open MRI, I might be able to do that. You know. Yeah. But yeah. I, I can't. Uh, you, you just. I don't care how many drugs you give me or whatever. I, I'll be in there and start screaming. Wow, because it's yeah. fun, it's interesting as you you know as you enter adulthood, you didn't you knew these things were going on in childhood, but you didn't yeah. know why, and you didn't necessarily have any control over what you were doing or where you were going. We're going to grandma's house. Uh, yeah. Good, she has high ceilings, you know? <laughs> um, but I, I love high ceilings. Well, we have um, high ceilings in this apartment. They're, you have an they're, awesome They're apartment. like 12 feet high, yeah. Yeah, you have one of those cool apartments that people scan, like the, the New York online apartments for years to get. Yeah. Yeah, but um, that's what I like. I was raised in a home with high ceilings and that's where I'm comfortable, so I don't fight it. By the way, excuse me if I wince every now and then. What's going on? What happened to me is I'm walking down the street the other day with Marjorie, and guess what the old man did? Did you fall? Yeah. And oh. uh, I really screwed up my my knee. Oh, man. Did it take the brunt of your fall? It, it took some of it, yeah. I think when I went down, it twisted. Oh, okay. that's yeah, that's a it's bad. It's a little bit. It's better today than it was yesterday, but now it's getting worse again. But it's better than it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I would check, check mm -hmm. into that because, see, I had, I was, when my sodium levels were all freaked out, um, I was fainting, like, once a week. And uh, I fell, I, I wasn't, my sodium was fine in Venice, or no, Havar, Croatia, which is a beautiful little town. And uh, we, I was just tripping along doing by the my way, thing. By the way, for you folks listening, she's bragging about her vacation, too, at the same time. Oh, yeah. See, notice how I suddenly put that in there? Yeah. Havar. So I was in Havar in Croatia. Yes, I was, I was Havaring around. By the way, did you go to any of those, those Game of Thrones sites? They they have Game of Thrones stores. They have Game of Thrones <laughs> tours. Yeah. Now, not being a Game of Thrones devotee, I did not do any of that. Oh, that was a great show. You didn't see yeah, that. I know. I've I've heard. I mean, people I like whose taste I trust say it was a very it was a really great show. Yeah, and I just never got into it, but it was everywhere. Yeah, yeah, and and because people that's, where, that's okay. where it was shot, and so all the yeah. uh, you know say oh, and, yeah. and it's a beautiful place because it's true quaintness, yeah. not this twee cultivated manufactured quaintness. 
you know, with the same tchotchke shots and the same man made. Let's get back to you fainting in Croatia. Oh, so I was on um, vacation of Croatia and I happened to pass out there. (laughs) Well, no, something happened. And there they in Croatia, they do have uh, slippery tiles. I mean, beautiful tile everywhere. Churches. Beautiful slippery tiles. Yeah. Slippery tiles. Like just waiting for me. And uh, we had a great day. I always remember places and what I bought. You know, and I got that really cool linen shirt. Um, and so we're going back to the ship. And uh, I took the fall. And it's like when I fall, it's like someone picks me up, like I've described it before, as by the neck, mm-hmm. and slams me down. Oh, really? And um, I I was one big bruise on this side of my face. My oh, cheek boy. And it must, it must have hurt, too. It, it hurt like crazy, but only when I was lying there. Yeah. And I felt for a second like I was going to pass out, but then it passed, and I felt and I felt that my teeth were there, <laughs> and I felt that my cheekbone was intact. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this can be overcome, you know. I just and put arnica on it. If you have a bruise, put arnica on your on your knee. What, it helps. Oh, really? Arnica. What's arnica? Yeah. Arnica. 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 Well, I used to read. Uh, my sister got me. A See, she she comes up with stuff I never heard of in my life. Okay. <laughs> Well, I was I had a subscription to Esquire, which I still if she, love. If somebody said and, Arnica to me, I'd say, where is that? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> is that in Croatia? No, it uh, it was recommended uh, by a, a doctor. They had a, He had a column at Esquire, mm-hmm. and they said, what is in your seven items in your medicine chest? And he named several things. Um, peroxide, I think, was one. And he said Arnica. So I was like, well, if it's good enough for the Esquire MD, it's good enough for me. So I started keeping it on hand. And if you have a joint pain, mm-hmm. it will it will help it. Mm-hmm. If you have bruising and swelling, it will immediately help. It. Well, and, maybe and, I better. Yeah, but uh, I guess I got to order that. What's it called again? Arnica. A R N I. Arnica. Arnica. A R N. Oh, wait a minute, folks. You may have missed the picture there because I switched. To something here, but anyway, wait a minute. Hold on a You're second. You're crafted. Arnica. How's it spelled? A R N. Wait a minute. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, a R N. Let me look this up here. A R N. I C I C A. I C A. Yeah. Let's see. Arnica at Amazon. Yeah, you can get it for like seven bucks or seven fifty. Um, you can get it at CVS too, but I've noticed it's not as as good as the older Arnica brands, um, which are more potent and more like a gel. And it will. It, I immediately. I just started slathering it on. We travel with it um, on this side of my face, and the bruise went away. Mm-hmm. I mean, pictures with cover stick. You could. You well, could the, here it is in tablet form. We don't want that, huh? I don't think you want that. No, it's best best of Ar- Arnica. Oh, Arnica, bestseller. Uh, yes, it's eight dollars. I can get it yeah. tomorrow. Okay, let me order it here. Let me see here. Uh, I'm gonna order it now. Buy now. And Boom. it's so it's on your doorstep. <laughs> well, it's either that or somebody else's doorstep because Amazon's not the greatest delivery system. Oh, um, really? Now we have Prime, which I think is one of the best bargains known to man. Well, we have not- it, but but. Oh. Yeah, but they they have the they have them they have people who have really they paying the lowest amount of money possible to yeah, deliver. Is, that, is Amazon delivering now? Amazon itself delivering to your house? Oh, um, I I don't. Or know. does it come it's UPS funny. or FedEx or something like it, that? Amazon does come to our house, not all the time. Because we have they, the, these guys in our neighborhood, they're lugging around these big things with all the packages in them and they go to each individual house and deliver them but with me here's what they do they don't deliver directly to my door they do sometimes they, when it's a when it's a small insignificant package like arnica will come arnica. will wind up at my front door yeah okay but if it's a huge thing that says uh, do not bend you know uh, yeah picking it up that that stays downstairs in the lobby, and I have to bring it up. 
Yeah, that's uh, um, that could be a draw. And by or the way, fiber. I don't know about you, but I found that Amazon sucks now. Just ever. do they? If you I, try I to get to any, if you, Marjorie spent a month trying to get money back on something. You're kidding. Yes. Now, I did. I like. I prefer eBay over Amazon. The thing is, well, eBay eBay's different. eBay is just individual sellers. Right. Who are selling to you. Yeah, but eBay manages them them quite well. Like I had trouble with some Pike's Place decaf Starbucks coffee pods, and uh, they remedied it right away. Mm. Um, it was some, somebody in Hong Kong. Oh man, I've never heard so many excuses. First, there was a fire at his warehouse. Then there was something else. And then there was something else. And then it was like s supposed to be delivered by a certain date, and yeah. it never came. So I got eBay got right on that. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Amazon does subcontract quite a bit. Not that Jeff Bezos needs another two hundred million. Well, I mean, billion. it's just it, it. I just find that when I try to get something back, it's terrible. And and by the way, how did I hurt this leg? I was going to Whole yeah. Foods to return an Amazon package so they wouldn't charge <laughs> me for it. <laughs> Have you noticed though how Whole Foods prices? You know, it, it did or that. I just it just hit me. I went to I went to Whole Foods to go give them the package and this was after I fell I walked on this leg I, I we walked there because we were that's what we were, where we were going to, to do yeah. it and we and we did it. it take seconds but it just hit me shouldn't they be giving me the arnica for free I would think in the honor of good faith and, the, and the fact that I, I, I broke almost broke my knee you know getting that package back yeah I know but well, like I, I, I will sit here for the hour that we're going to be doing this, and when I get up, it's I'm in pain. Really, it, then now until I walk a little bit and get it worked out, you know. Yeah, isn't it ironic that walking can make it feel better? Because yeah. what is it, sciatica? I think sciatica. Yeah. Here we are, um, folks. Uh, this is old folks stuff. You ready? <laughs> you have sciatica? Uh, I do. I think see, you know. See. I. Have my cousin um, is a chiropractor in Louisiana. What we do, should do, we should road. do an episode of the show called What's Wrong With You? Yeah, yeah. what's your ailments? We used to have the wheel of ailments. But, uh, no, the, uh, well, if you know, speaking of health and health topics, Ozempic is being touted as this, like, panacea for everything that could ever ill you. And it, but it did make me think of something that your friend Al Goldstein said one time. Because he struggled well, with his weight for some of his life. Yeah. And he said, food talks to me. And I thought, I thought about that a lot. And it was like, it calls to him. And that's what the users of Ozempic say, that it turns down the volume on food. Call, really? Call I never you. had food. Food has never talked to me. That's, <laughs> really, it's not, you're a nonverbal food yeah. like either, right? Yeah, but it, um, I can, I understood what he meant because sometimes it's so primary in your consciousness, it might as well, they might as well be screaming at you that devil's food cake. Well, but um, they're also saying it works with cutting alcohol cravings. Oh, really? But you know what, really? You know what else it's known to do? It's also and people lose weight on it. People who, and that's the what problem it's is, The problem is that there are people who genuinely need Ozempic. Okay, because they've got uh, diabetes, I believe, is what it treats. Yeah. And they can't get it because all these assholes who are using it for weight loss are yeah. eating them up. Yeah. 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 And, but it also, you know what it causes? Facial aging. It, in a study, it's, it, it is. It stops uh, facial aging? No, it doesn't stop it. It promotes it. But oh, it promotes with, it. Oh, I see. Okay. But when you think about it, Ben, I mean, say a person weighs 300 pounds and they weigh 300 pounds for much of their life and they suddenly take Ozempic and lose 150 pounds. Well, that's going to show. Well, I don't, that, I don't, yeah, but I don't know if they're going to lose 150 pounds on Ozempic, but, you know. Well, I, I don't know either how much that they would lose. Yeah, well, I'm just I, saying, I lost a lot of weight way back when, about a couple of years ago, but then I had the... Uh, uh, the prostate operation, and I had some pills I had to take, and one thing or another, and it put about 30 pounds back on me. You never were heavy when I've known well, you. I had lost about six, I've always had a little pot, you know, but I, <laughs> I, I, I lost about 60 pounds. 
Wow. Yeah. That's a, I, was, I, was looking, your... I was looking gaunt, actually. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but it. but I, it, I I put back the weight uh, about thirty pounds of the weight because of drugs that I've been having to take and because of the prostate operation. So, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. But um, if it cuts down on alcohol cravings, that would be, I, you know, it seems to be like quote a panacea. But for so many problems, so many ills of the world, but it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. And there's a good book on things like, you know, that have been released into the public before thalidomide. There's a new book out on thalidomide I'm going to read. I remember that. And they used to have retarded children or something. Uh, yeah. It was, kids with five arms coming out of their forehead. Yeah. yeah. It was given to pregnant women, wasn't it, to prevent rubella, the German measles, yeah. I think. But they didn't bank on these side effects. Yeah, the side but effects are terrible. Oh, yeah. On that note, and, on that note, we've... we've spent our time here well we have and we haven't and talked we, about anything anything <laughs> well it worked for something else <laughs> yeah. it worked for us anyway i'll see you next time okay ladies and gentlemen yeah. that's laurie thompson bye laurie bye yeah now in its ninth year this is gabnet the great american broadcast network talk like you've never heard it before and here we are. How are you? How are you, everybody? Oh, boy. Oh, my leg is just killing me. My knee. Uh, I, I finally decided what it is. I think I tore a meniscus. You tore a what? I tore a meniscus when I tripped the other day. So, anyway. Uh, and we have some people coming over on Monday. We're going to go to a restaurant here in the neighborhood, but I think we're going to have to order out because I don't know if I can walk. Or is that what the Chinese person said? I don't know if I can walk. Get it? Okay. Anyway, listen, we got uh, we got people here. We got people here. I, I started off. I first of all, the trouble getting the show going tonight, uh, and then once I got it going, I suddenly realized I was playing the wrong interview because it was the interview I ran last night, and I don't want. Anybody writing me going, you know, you were in that last night. Because I got these people who sit out there and complain about everything I do wrong. Hey, I'm old. Leave me alone. Don't touch me. Anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's bring in at least the two people that are waiting right now. And they're two really, you know, this, these are quality people here. These are quality. That's uh, Kevin there. And uh, uh, coming up next should be... Brian Neary, there he is. How you doing, Brian? Doing great, Alex. How are you? Okay, I'm. I, well, you know, I got this damn meniscus thing, and it's it's painful. Jeez, Almighty! So I've been reading on how to handle it. It's so, your meniscus, huh? Now it's your meniscus. I think it. When I I analyzed it myself because based on that leg. And oh that leg, no, you weren't on the web again. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That leg previously had a torn meniscus okay so what I figure I did is I probably tore it again by trashing the knee because it feels just like the torn meniscus felt somebody and, said that last night on the show yes you said it I know yeah um, you know but I'm um, not a doctor it was just a guess well that was one of the possible choices and we don't know for sure that's it but I'm pretty sure that's what it is so I sent you an x-ray machine what no, I, I on Amazon you, from Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. Yeah, no, it's it'll be Costco, Friday. It's, it's a Kirkland X-ray machine. It's from Costco. You got two of them. <laughs> they got two of them taped together. No, anyway, so I uh, I decided that I uh, so I went and I ordered the I read the, you don't you don't use ibuprofen, okay? That's where you were wrong about it, okay? okay. Uh, they say ibuprofen doesn't work, and believe it or not, shots do not work. The only thing that works is ice. And so like I vodka did, shots? What? Tequila shots? That would work. Tequila shots would work. Oh, tequila yeah, shots. Yeah, tequila I, shots. You won't feel a thing after that. Two sleeping pills and two shots of tequila. Everything I, I, uh, tequila shots might do it. Okay, I agree with you. But works my, the Ask the Indians. Yeah, but my... Uh, uh, so I ordered this uh, thing that's an ice wrap. That's a, a wrap of ice on there. 
and uh, I'll, I'll try that for a while and see if that helps it, you know. But I've got, but I've got, I've got Mandy coming on um, on Monday, Brian. Wow. Brian, That'll help. Mandy, you know who Mandy is? <laughs> Sounds familiar. Mandy no, and she Don, farts. Don Giller is also going to be joining us, I hope. Uh, and I was going to take him out for lunch, but I think we're going to have to call in for lunch because I don't think I can even walk a block right now. You know, so uh, I've had this meniscus problem before and uh, did a little therapy, but more than that, it just after a while and icing it, it went away. You know. how, how long did it take last time? About three years. Oh, that's good. Well, yeah. at least we got your. I don't remember. You know, I don't remember. It was like a while, quite a while back. But man, I do remember. I was, how I got it is I was sitting on the floor and I somehow turned my leg a little wrong. That's all it took. <laughs> and boom, there went the meniscus. So I went to a doctor and he did an x ray and he said, Yeah, you tore your meniscus. I said, What do you do about it? He said, Here, I'll, I'll send you off to you know, physical therapy. He sent me to some guy who rubbed my leg a couple of times a week, you know. Ooh, that well, I, like yeah, I don't want to have to go through that again. I don't want to have to go to Midtown to get it done, you know. So anyway. Maybe a girl rubbing your leg would be better. Yeah, I, when, try I, that. I, when I tore my meniscus, I stepped out of the shower, heard a loud pop and excruciating pain. Yeah, and so what and did so they I do? I went to the doctor, and the first thing they gave me was a shot, and the second thing they gave me was Norco. Norco? Oh, a pain pill. Yeah, pain well, pill. maybe no, I will. Pain. I think I'm going to just to 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 uh, uh, um, you know what's the word I'm looking for? Just to make sure it's, that's that's what it is. I'm going to go down to this this doctor or these doctors. It's a it's a sports clinic yeah. that I went to before. And if they say that's what it is, I'll have them send me to something. You know, have them give me something. They give me some drugs. That's fine with me, you know. Yeah, I was standing. I opened the garage, the door to the garage, and I just slightly moved. And like my hip, I thought I popped my bone out of my hip or something. And I was like, like limping around, going, "What the hell just happened?" And oh my god, I'm starting to get old. And was that a meniscus too? Around. No, no, no. But I walked around and I worked it out. But you know, I always laugh because people say I wasn't doing anything, and I pulled this or I pulled that. And yeah, it's happening to me now. Well, I'm kind of banned from sports medicine, mainly because I never participated in sports on any level. And I kept saying to myself, what in the world did I do getting a sports injury? You know, I guess it was the, I guess it was the Emmy I got, you know, I saw I saw a sports specialist, an orthopedic specialist that also was board certified in sports medicine. And I said, is this because I'm overweight? And he says, no. 90% of the people that get this are athletes from yeah. kicking a ball and stuff. And I went, okay. He oh, says it'll take three to six months to heal. Yeah, but and, I mean, it was, and, but you, you got over the pain pretty easily soon. And in a couple of weeks, yeah. You use a cane. I actually, that round handle cane that you had last mm -hmm. night, uh, I find are really uncomfortable. Yeah. Flat hit. Flat handle with a sponge is a lot more comfortable. Yeah, I'm thinking of getting that. I'm thinking of getting a walker, I think. I'm, I'm I, 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 actually, I get a walker, and I want yeah. to go to Costco now and get one of those, uh, use the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, those little carts, electric wheelchair thingies. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. yeah I want to get one of those because everybody who rides them at Costco is really mean. You know, no, get, you know what they're, get out yeah, of my yeah, way. But, what? Lately, there have been, I've noticed a lot of mean people at Costco. Yeah. And I, I hear people say it all the time, but man, some people have been like. But like, they're all in those carts, right? Well, those people do. But yeah, just normal people around with oh, their people carts. people in general shopping. just, people in general have just gotten mean. Yeah. You know? Uh, I mean, really mean. Uh, in Costco last week and. I was wearing a mask, and the guy said, by the way, you don't need to wear a mask anymore. And I said, funny, you don't look like my doctor. And what did he say? Uh, he said, I'm not your doctor, and he walked away. So. Should have just coughed on him. Yeah. I should have. Hey, if, if you want to wear a mask, you know, yeah. that's your right, and that's your, you, nobody should ever put you down for that. That's yeah. the way I look at it. They'll be back again in a few more weeks. Yeah, once, once. Well, no, do you know what we're going to do the next time we get COVID? They're not no. going to admit it. 
they're just not going to admit that it's a problem. Yeah. You know, so well, I'm, uh, yeah. So listen, I didn't check the news. Has our president uh, been jailized or whatever they did to him? I listen. Beautiful, to- beautiful mug shot. Is it, yeah, is really? CNN radio on the way home, and they are saying like he just turned down Jefferson Street, and he's going down there. Oh, and, you know, like every I, I, single turn, every single thing. yeah, give, it, give the helicopter shots, to, everything. They were trying to give the sniper directions. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like they sit there and they complain about how he's doing this for media attention, and the media is giving him all the attention. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You stupid idiots, just turn off. Don't don't turn on the camera. I heard the picture of his mugshot was a donkey's ass. Uh, let's see, mugshot, mugshot. He, yeah, mugshot. It, it, he Where just looks head pissed head off as hell, and that's what he wanted. Oh, oh God. That, yeah, that's that's one of his typical pictures, isn't it? Yeah. Here, here is the mugshot, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mugshot. Here's the mugshot, first ever. Uh, ooh, oh, oh, he, oh, he looks uh, pissed off. Uh huh. There he is. And that's what he wanted. So now he can use that in his campaign. Yeah. Yeah. That's like a. I don't know. I mean, what's he trying for that look for? Stern? I'm I'm mad about this. I don't like what's happening to me. I mean, it's like what? he's taking a crap. He needs some colas. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> trying trying to pinch a porcupine. Yeah. That, that was one of, that was one of the memes going around. Oh, <laughs> that I was see. him him bald. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the orange suit. That'll be his jail picture. Well, you know, no, that's his campaign picture. Yeah. That's his fundraising picture. Yeah. And an orange jumpsuit for a jail jumpsuit. Very cool. Send me money. Yeah. Yeah. Send hmm. me money. Plus, he had to fork out 200, uh, 200 G, right? Nothing. Yeah. No, 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 no. His bail bonds company the bail bonds company forked that out for him because he's a billionaire he doesn't want to touch any of his money yeah yeah how how can a billionaire go in and hire a bail bonds company for twenty thousand dollars you know you just take your the the ten percent twenty thousand dollars right and then you get it back right if you have the money you give that to him you get it back instead he hired a bail bonds company to do that now he's got to pay all the bail bonds company to do that for him Wait a minute, wait a minute, minute. I don't get what you're saying. I know what bail bondsmen do. I know that they pay off about 10... But you don't need... But if you're rich, you don't need to go to a bail bonds company. No, you just pay them 200,000. Yeah, if if I'm in trouble with 200,000 and I need 20,000, I go to the bail bonds. You're absolutely right. And then they... But if if I'm a millionaire, I just go into my account down the street and get $20,000 and give it to them, right? Or $200,000 and you give it to the... Give it to them. And then if you show up, you're getting your money back. Absolutely. it's, It's not like... That's money you're never going to see again. Exactly. A lot, so, of, a lot of the bails bondsmen people take a piece of property. Wait, wait a minute. So he did ba- a bail bondsman? A bail oh. bond company, yes. Yes. Easy. I mean, yeah. I think even G- Giuliani, I think, didn't use a bail bondsman. Did yes, he? he did. Oh, he did? Yeah. He did. Okay. Uh, well, he's broke. You know, and it would be awfully nice if Trump would pay his legal fees. <laughs> you know, I mean, and all these guys' legal fees, because he's the one that got them into trouble. And the reason they're in trouble is because they were doing right by him or what they thought was doing right by him. Yeah. And, what about the guy? <laughs> what about the guy moving all the stuff around? You know, the guy who moved all the boxes for yeah, him? Yeah. That guy's going in there, too. And is he going to pay his, his lawyer's fees? I bet he won't. No. What a not. cheap... Asshole. I mean, really? He's lived, his whole life, he's lived his whole life that way, though, being a cheap asshole. I mean, come on. You know? I mean, I know that if I did something, I was working for a company, and I did something for the company, and for some reason I got arrested for doing the work of the company, the company would take care of my legal fees. That's what companies do when they're decent. You know? Boy, I would not want to be his lawyer. I would not want to be his friend. I mean, you know. The lawyer that he got in Georgia is a 
white collar crime uh, uh, specialist. Well, he's a high profile lawyer, right? He had high like, uh, yeah, yeah, he had yeah. a couple uh, rock people, Usher, Usher, Usher. and all these people. Yeah, but probably go broke on Trump. I would say he maybe would will drop Trump as soon as he doesn't get paid. You know, <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, it, doesn't it go to, doesn't it uh, uh, seem to be uh, the, the lot in life of people who have anything to do with him that they, you know, they're not going to, uh, oh, here, I got to turn this on. That's what I got to do. Um, there we go. There we go. I just got a better picture there. See, I don't do anything right anymore. And it sounds like he—it sounds like he got the guy just now, right? They said he came off the plane and talked to him like, like he just switched lawyers and just got I that guy. Fired the other guy today too. Yeah, and this guy came up with some immediate thing about, oh, this is not right. This is not proper. You know, we're gonna <laughs> the same usual usual crap. And the thing That's is, what they, lawyers say they can't make any of it stick. You know, of course, of course, if uh, if Phil still called this program, shall I be Phil for a moment? Yeah. W would that would that help? Yeah, sure. He, Trump hasn't done anything wrong. He's just he's just accused. He hasn't been convicted yet. There we go. There we go. Yeah. That's what Phil would say. Well, you know, I I agree that a man is innocent until proven guilty. However, I don't think he ever gave people that benefit of the doubt. Nope. You know. And um, uh, he's a, he's really a low life, really a low life. You know, you you have friends, you you take care of your friends. Absolutely. You know, you do right by them, and and uh, try and and get them so that they you know, you just do right by them. And in this case, these people were working in your service, doing a job for you, and they got caught in this web. Okay, uh, I mean, maybe some of them didn't even know they were doing anything illegal. I think some of those people that are being charged are fake electors. Am I right or wrong about that? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So they're not even in the way, you know, they have nothing to do with Trump, but Trump should take care of all of them. I mean, isn't the money coming out of his, uh, in, uh, his uh, campaign funds, his super PAC anyway? <laughs> Yep, so why yeah. shouldn't? He? But poor Giuliani, he had to go out and get what did he get? He got get himself some cheap lawyer, right? Yeah. So, you know, so it's all too bizarre, too bizarre. But uh, did they have pictures of him? Well, they didn't have any pictures of him being arraigned, I guess. No, they took him through an area that they that they usually use when they arrest somebody and bring him like in the back side door. Well, when, they like go, when he goes before the judge, you know, uh, uh, weren't there reporters in there or photographers? Because this is a court where you can, fo they will video the, the proceedings. Jail. It was the jail. It wasn't the court, it was the jail. Oh, it was the jail they did it in. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> everything on CNN that he had the option to go to the courthouse, but instead they went to the jail. And they're saying, like, this is the worst jail, uh, like, you know, that it's just deteriorated and the walls and everything is crumbling and all this stuff. So perfect for him to spend his rest of his life. Yeah. But they, they gave him a motorcade. So they had 18 motorcycles for him. Oh, jeez. You know, blocking off traffic ahead. And then, you know, the, the other group bringing him through, you know, through the streets. So they said they keep saying, oh, we're going to treat him like a normal, a normal civilian. That's yeah. Well, and then and they, they, civilians they, they, don't have Secret Service protection. Well, yeah, no, they took like fifteen minutes to book them, and they said usually it takes about two or three hours to book people but, in that. Well, you did that. you did notice what he did? He made sure he was going to get booked when during prime time. Mm, yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. See, and yeah, they also said that too. They said he could have come at three a.m. if he wanted to avoid everything. They should have said when he showed up at, uh, what was it, 7 o'clock at night, 7.30, something like that. They should have said, we're closed. Yeah. You know. I don't, I don't think he's seen the judge yet. I think his lawyer negotiated 
the bond and everything and for the time to turn himself in and he did so mm -hmm. uh during arraignment he'll he'll see the the uh, judge during, at that time yeah yeah so you know what i have sitting out to, out of my front door here in my office probably if i were to open it up the cat the cat would be there yeah yeah the, the, already the cat you know what's amazing about this cat this cat stayed with us four years ago maybe uh, and I figured, uh, hey, you know, I, I know cats are smart. And I know they have long-term memory, but that's a long time ago. Your cat came he, back She hid for morning. about five minutes. Hid for about five minutes, and when she saw it was me, she came out, and she'd been following me all over the house now. Wow. Oh, yeah. Like, she knows who I am. She know she knows to stand in front of this. I, I opened I got, open up the door to the bathroom when I just used it. There's the cat waiting for me. In fact, let me see. Let me see. Hold on. Oh, it's just going to kill me to get up, though. Hold on a second. I just want to see if the cat's out in, the, in front of here. Uh, oh, wow. Mm. Mm. I didn't feel anything. Okay. Let me see. I sent him a, a, a cane oh, that's adjustable. Uh, you know, because that is. cane he had yesterday oh, is a flat she handle. Was waiting. Send him a hurricane. She was over there. Yeah. She was waiting, not right outside That's the good door, quality. but down the, a little bit down the hall. So. Anyway, my knee, I swear to you. I feel like an old person. Oh, wait a minute, yeah. I am. I forgot. <laughs> so I sent you, I sent you yeah. a cane. But you are right about the ice. It makes it feel a lot better. But yeah. I sent you a cane. You'll get it tomorrow. No, no, no. You didn't have to send me a cane. Yeah, it's adjustable, and then you lock it in place. Uh -huh. And the handle doesn't sit round. It's a lot better. You need to take the. And what the it does because it's for old, old people. It makes fart sounds. I use it all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, makes fart that sounds. That would be cute. By the way, there was one that I saw. I was looking at canes, right? And there was one that I saw that had a flashlight on it. Yeah, you got one with seats on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute, a cane with a seat on it? Yeah, yeah. it flops right down. Oh, you mean sit. when you're not using it as a cane? You sit yeah, the little down. thing flops down, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe you can just get a pogo stick and ride that instead. I don't know. But every time I stand up after sitting down, oh, this is just painful. Mm. But you then if the I walk a little bit, I'm okay. But the cat was out there just, just right down a little bit from the door and, and just looking at me, you know, like, hey, I'm, a, I'm the cat. You're supposed to come out and take care of me, right? Yeah. Yep, that's what they Cat's do. Cat's been gone for four years, and all of a sudden it shows back up. Marjorie had all this cat stuff. Cat box, cat bowls, cat this, cat that. You know why? Because she wanted to get a cat. So she bought all the stuff for a cat before we even decided we'd buy one, get a cat or not get a cat. Okay. And the only problem I have with getting a cat is, number one, at my age... Uh, that cat's going to be an orphan at some point, you know. If he lives to be 15 years old, I'll probably be gone by then. Either that or I've got an animal who's looking at me for the next 15 years going, you know, after you're gone, I'm still going to be here, you know. And um, also, I wanted to get two of them because you need two cats because you need them to keep each other company in case you go out, do things, you know. And then, what happens when we go on vacation? We don't know anybody that'll take care of them. So, you know, I kind of, I, I don't know. But she wanted okay. to get a cat, so she bought all this cat stuff, planning on getting a cat. So, but, but it's good for, for Berta, this cat here. So, it was an adorable cat, by the way. Lovely cat. Still has the same personality she had when we had her here you know, four years ago. I can't believe the cat disappeared four years ago and came back. No, no, I went to her, to her owners. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I really, uh, the cat, I love this, this cat. I've always loved her. She has a, you know, but she's very needy, you know. She's one of these cats that when you're walking around the house, she then flops down right in front of you and tries to trip you. Oh, <laughs> Well, I don't need that right now, okay? No. So I'm being very careful with the cat. 
This uh, cane is aluminum. You can knock the cat out of the way yeah, with it. Yeah. If I if I could, I would let the cat. I would let the cat in right now. But you know where the cat would go immediately? Right. All here, behind yeah. the monitors. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Right. And Warm. get stuck in all the wires and stuff like that. And I'm going. I'm going to go get the hell out of there. You know. If she just go down here and just sit and be nice. But no, I should get down here and go through the wires and see if she could squeeze through certain places. You know, they always like to see that. Um, and she would definitely go under the desk because what cats love is cover. You know, anything that's covering them. So Anyway, so we have a cat. And where it's warm. We have a cat visiting us. I just got my cat history. I've never owned a cat. Have you just got a cat? No, I've never owned a oh, cat. You never owned a cat. I love cats. No. I just cat cats own you. You own dogs. You like cats, don't you, Brian? You have you have. Yeah, I had I had a cat when I was younger, when I was single, and had the cat, and then uh, we just got a cat like a year ago. Almost, yeah, exactly a year ago. He says I can't believe you're not putting the kitty on camera. Ratings winner. Sit yeah. the cat in a director's chair next to you. Yeah, you got to be able. To, you got to assume that the cat is going to sit wherever I put the cat. Okay. No. No. Mm -hmm. no. Nope. But they will. Do you ever notice people when they're on like TV, like, and doing their their thing from home, uh, you know, through Zoom, they're, they're sitting there talking, and all of a sudden this tail goes by. Cats will always find a way to be on camera. She's kind of like Adrian. Oh, there he goes. Who's oh, Where's he going? The cat or Adrian? Is, is he looking for the cat? I bet he's looking for the cat. Okay. Anyway, nobody else is calling us tonight, huh? This is a great group, though. This is a nice, nice uh, bunch of people. Um, what's new with you, uh, Kevin? Anything that you're doing that is uh, fun and enjoyable? Well, just getting ready to get my daughter off to school. It's not been fun. Oh, is this the uh, is this the empty nest moment? It's coming. This is the last uh, the last daughter to go off to yeah. college, right? Twelve days. Twelve days. Okay. And counting. Now, let me just ask you. You don't have to tell me if I'm being rude here. How much is how much is college costing you? Uh, well, we're, it's probably around 60 grand a year. Oh, oh wonderful. My. That's another car. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> I'm hiding all my money. <laughs> but I mean, 60 grand. Now, some of yeah, but she's got some scholarships and things like that. Well, that is she that, is that, picked that up. shops into the 60 grand or? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Yeah. And, and if we, if we end up moving to Oregon, like we want to, it will knock off another 20 residency, things like that. So if we move up there, oh, which I got we a condo. Always you planned can... on returning. Uh, you do? Yeah, okay, I have a don't rental. say that. <laughs> I have a rental in Oregon. Not that I want to rent it to you, but you could use that address and say that you moved. Yeah, don't don't tempt me because I got all kinds of ideas. But, no, okay. Um, right. Yeah, it's pretty expensive. It, it's. You know, re in reality, I think it comes, you know, in the 40 to 50 range, somewhere around there. By is, the that time book, is that books and everything, or you still have the paper Oh, books? no, no, no. No, you got books and food and all that. Well, yeah, I, it's it's somewhere around there with, I think you got a few more for books, but most of it's included with the, the dorm and all that stuff. I mean, it goes down as you go, because the freshman year, you have to stay there and the whole bit. Well, it kind of bothers me, though, that, you know, I mean, I, the people have to put out that much money to send their kid to college, you know? I mean, it should it be... It is. It's it, rough. It, it should be just like any other school. You, The state should take care of it. Yep. You know, um, the other thing is, uh, there's some question now as to whether a college education is needed. Now, it's needed for some things, but not everything, you know? No, it's not. I mean... A certain level of college is needed nowadays just to take out the damn garbage. But um, at, le at least uh, I would say, well, seven, eight years ago when I was trying to find a job after I got laid off, mm -hmm. certainly needed some kind of degree. Um, I don't have a degree. I never went to college. I never had a degree and either. I had 
40 years of experience and it was still pain. I got, you know, accepted applications and got interviews and had 30 some odd years of experience in uh, driving and transportation and logistics. And Mm -hmm. I had a stack of references this thick, the whole bit. But I, you know, my age is working against me. I know that my disability was working against me as well. But, you know, you're still going up against um, wage wage issues and you can get people to work cheaper than than I would have to work for. You know, I was making a good wage after however many years, you know, 40 years of working. And, you know, I finally built myself up to a good wage and people didn't want to pay that because they could pay somebody at 30 years or 35 years old that they could get a lot cheaper doing the same thing Hmm. and that's you know that's the reality of it no matter what you say yeah but getting back to the thing about college about a college education uh it it it, it, some people say it's a fallacy that really you need it for most things you're going to do in life probably i mean the job that i had probably well it did but it didn't also wouldn't it be nice if your daughter she wants to go to college bless her wants yeah. to go to college but then she's being asked what are you studying for yeah and you know how old's your daughter 18 yeah is it any time in the is that the time in her life to be able to have to decide what she's going to do with the rest of it yeah it's hard because of a lot of friends are are struggling with that right now yeah and, i mean that's ridiculous and, i mean so why not just allow her to go to college Get an education, learn stuff, okay? Become a full, well-rounded person, but not have to sit there and say, oh, I think I'm going to become an archaeologist. Well, and that's what I've told her. She's decided what she wants to do, what she hopes she wants to do. And I said, if you change your mind somewhere along the line, that's fine. You know, get your general education stuff done, and, and if you got what you think you want going... You can you can still study that part of it, but get the main stuff done, and in two years you'll know more or less where you want to go. And those last two years you can key in on that. And if it's changed, then you can key in the other way. You know. I mean, in, in my business, uh, gosh, you know, I mean, I don't I don't know why I went to school for a very short time for broadcasting. And they didn't teach Mm -hmm. me anything that would help me be a broadcaster. They were teaching us, at that time, they were still teaching you how to do radio plays. Yeah. You know? And and, uh, finally, one day, I said, look, I'm already working at a radio station. I'm already on my way towards a career. I don't need this, and I'm taking a seat somebody else could use. Life experience was much much easier then, you know, and and people accepted life experience. Well, listen, life experience should be important today. That's the best. When it comes to broadcasting, because the first thing I'd ask if I were hiring an announcer or something like that, well, let's hear you. Are you any good? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't ask, do you have a college degree? I want to know if you're any good. Send me an audition tape. Let me hear you. Well, that's the same thing with, you know, like going to school for a trade. I mean, that's good. That's good to have as well. If you're going to go into welding or something like that, it's good to learn that and then be able to walk into the workforce you, with that kind of a background. But you know what also should be trade schools? <coughs> I know people always get mad at me when I say this. If you're going to be a doctor, you should, you should go to a trade school. I, I, I don't what disagree. What more is you know? it than, uh, you know... They well, that's kind of what we it. grew up on, you know, yeah, dissecting they, frogs and all that they, stuff. That you know, auto shop, auto shop. I yeah. went. I had auto shop. Yeah, yeah. we did too. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, when you're talking about, uh, um, you know, uh, having a degree in something, uh, really, when it comes to broadcasting, you know, I, I would never say, "Do you have a degree?" When somebody walked but in the door. Nowadays, a, a degree just gets you. Ten twenty five thousand dollars more in your paycheck is really all it does. Well, that's stupid too. It is stupid. Of course, you it know? is. It is. It's ridiculous. But, but if you want to make money, that that's that's what it does. Because really. say, say in, you've in got a guy who has, reality. Well, let's say you've got a guy who doesn't have a college degree. 
Okay. Well, and that's that's some hey, of the issues make, I ran into make, in my career. Is he going to make twenty five thousand dollars less, even though he's going to work just as much as the guy is making twenty five thousand yes. dollars more? Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. the issues I ran into in my career that's because ridiculous. I knew my my pe- people that I knew that were doing the same job I was doing, and they were making twenty thousand dollars more a year, and yeah. I knew that they had degrees and I did not. Yeah. And we were doing the exact same job, and maybe I was doing more because I was in a, you know, a busier distribution. And knowing center you, you were probably stuff. more competent than most people. Well, that's the thing is I was in a busier distribution center doing more stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Internationally. Once I, got my, once I got my bachelor's degree, I got extra money as a police officer. Right. You know, because you have a college degree. You got a piece of paper. Do you know? Do you know that's it, right. Did, did my microbiology degree? My four-year degree helped me in law enforcement. Not much. Yeah, what's it got to do with it? You my, know, but my, you got a I, piece of paper. My, my well, wife, I was going to go be a doctor, but I thought being a cop. Was my better. wife Marjorie has a uh, has a teaching degree, and uh, she has a master's. You have to have a master's in order to teach high school. Yep. You know, you can go for a certain many cu- couple of years without having a master's degree, but you have to be studying for it in order to be a teacher. So he, she was a teacher, you know, and and she has a master's degree, and here I am with my thumb up my ass, you know. You know, uh, in, in California, you need a master's degree to be a teacher too. Oh yeah, no, I, she, she, and and she paid off her degree by teaching school for two years. All she had to do was teach for two years or something like that, and the whole uh, the whole degree was paid for. Would she have her job at the bank if she didn't have a degree? She wasn't at a bank. Marjorie? No. Oh, I thought you said she works at a bank. No, she worked for Citic Capital, which, among other things, has a bank. Oh, oh, oh. I but they that. also have, they're also a, uh, you know, a uh, uh, investment corporation and things like that. So, yes, uh, Charlene. Hello, Charlene. We haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I want to, what did Marjorie teach? I don't know. Oh, you don't know what subject? I forget okay. now. I think maybe art. I don't know. She, I know she got a, a degree in art as well. Oh. You know, which means she can draw a straight line, you know. <laughs> but you, you have people like <clears throat> like Stephanie, my 15-year-old. She's only a sophomore, and she knows she wants to do art. She, she knows she wants to go to an art school, so. Yeah. Well, you see. There's a big one in San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, with the car on the side of the building. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, obviously, if a kid wants to go to college, good for them, that's fine. But they shouldn't be penalized for not going to college as long as they're, you know, especially in my, like my <laughs> profession. Come on, what are you going to college for? To learn how to read a, co- a commercial? So you know? the, the, the art school in San Francisco not only has a car on the side of the building, but they have a auto museum have either one of you or have you been in they they're at car week they they put a big exhibit on at car week and they show a couple of the cars that the kids designed yes oh, the kids oh, design no, no, cars no. there they have they have like i went there one time like 10 years ago they have 40 cars old cars yeah i haven't seen that um, oh, okay did you go to where, co- where is it hmm? i think in san francisco i think it's the San Francisco or California, whatever they call their arts. School. Okay, so you have a bachelor's degree in what? Yeah. In what, it, Alan? Me, oh, in microbiology. Oh, really? And do you use it? I I think you use the you know you, you think differently with a college degree, but uh, you know do, I'm not in microbiology. I you know I never worked in microbiology. I was going to go into medicine. I was going to go into emergency medicine. Mm-hmm. And my parents, I had good grades, and my parents had connections with uh, Stanford University right across the bay yeah and I, so I, I got that and while I was working on that I took biology and then I became police officer and all that I, I continued the four-year degree on the microbiology and I don't know you know I never I never even worked in forensics other than fingerprinting yeah you know, yeah dusting for fingerprints <laughs> stop and do that you don't need a degree yeah. so I think I think comparing Two things. I think a medical doctor should have uh, college. I disagree with well, you there. But no, no, so. no. I'm not saying they shouldn't have an education. You know, no. I don't want somebody hacking into me without an education. I'm saying they they should go to a trade school for that. 
Big deal. When you they get out of medical school, they spend. Well, that's a trade school. But why shouldn't they just go directly to their trade school rather than have to go through four years of college before they start being uh, studying to be a doctor? That makes uh, no I think, sense. I think I think microbiology and biology are important to know uh, before you go to the trade school. So. Well, but no, they could teach it to you at the trade school. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know, all I'm saying is that we should, uh, oh well, just change the way in which we teach those crafts. Lawyers, why not just send them directly to a trade school? What do they learn? You know? <laughs> How to be lousy politicians? Yeah, well, what's the old joke? Um, two lawyers are walking down the street, uh, and one lawyer looks at the other lawyer and says, Look at her, I'd like to screw her. And the other lawyer says, Out of what? Yeah. <laughs> That's cute. That's cute. Nah, it's the oldest joke. The only lawyer one I've ever heard is, you know what, uh, what twenty lawyers under the sea is a good start. A Not good enough. Start. A good start, yeah. yeah. By the I way, I went to I went to a vocational school in high school, mm -hmm. so I I went. We had courses based around electronics, and then and that started sophomore, junior, senior year. My junior senior summer. Mm -hmm. I worked at Spectra Physics on uh, Monday through Friday. Then I had another job on the weekend. And then uh, my senior year, I only took like three classes all year. And I went to, uh, I had, I got a job at uh, Halo Packard. So I worked at Halo Packard. Mm -hmm. And then I got another electronics after that. And then I, yeah, I, I, I knew I wanted to be a boss. I knew I like manufacturing. So um, bust my ass to get to where I am. So, wow. But, but you know, I, I took, I, I made some opportunities for myself. So, I think that's hard. That's the scary thing about the kids, you know, Simon's a senior and it's like, you know, it's like, I think I got lucky in certain spots. So, you know, it's like, man, you, you got to bust your ass. And, well, uh, I knew, I knew when I graduated high school, what I wanted to do with my life. I knew I wanted to be, I wanted to be in show business of some sort. And I knew with it because I was doing a radio show in high school. Uh, at a local radio station, it was our high school radio show, that that's what I wanted to do. Uh, and so when I got a high, out of high school, I immediately uh, w went to work at KTIM in San Rafael where I did this high school radio show and worked part, part time there. And then I finally started getting one job after another at cheap ass radio stations, one in Reno, Nevada, then another one in Klamath Falls, Oregon, you know, and wow. so on, working my way up, so to speak. Um, that was my school, you know, and it was the best school I could ever have, you know. Would you consider San yeah. Francisco like the fifth market, the fifth largest market in radio? Yeah, what about it? I don't know, you said that in 1991 in an interview. You think it's still the fifth largest market? I think it still is. I think it is still number five or number four. Um, uh, well, hold on a second. Uh, Echo, what number market in radio? Echo, what number market in radio is San Francisco? The phone number for a place. Oh, did, 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 did. <laughs> the Cavalry <laughs> program this thing. Oh. Is 800 Echo. Shut the fuck up. Would you like me to send this to your phone? Echo, stop. Oh, did, she, did she say that? What? She said, did you be saying that to your phone? Is that what she said? No. Man, I missed it. Okay. No. Yeah. Say it again. Do you kiss your mother with that mouth? That's what she <laughs> should say. Um, uh, uh, yeah, no, I uh, um, I think it's it, it. I think it's still the fifth, but I may be wrong. Or maybe it's the fourth some point i i know it's it's uh it's uh, new york it's los angeles chicago and i do believe it's san francisco after that jack jack claims that dallas fort worth is in first or second no market no it's not not even close yeah, maybe I misunderstood him or something. Well, uh, hold on a second. I can look it up here. You know, I got, I got free time if you do. Uh, top 10 radio markets. Top 10 uh, radio markets. EO markets. 
Mm-hmm. Evan, did you call me by accident today? Yeah. Okay. okay. Here, here we go. <laughs> New York is number oh, one. I did. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I thought you did. New York is number one, not Dallas. Number two is Los Angeles. Number three is Chicago. Number four oh. is San Francisco. Oh, wow. Okay. Number five is Dallas Fort Worth. Number six is Houston Galveston. Number seven is Washington, D.C. Number eight, Philadelphia. Number nine, Boston. And number 10, Seattle, uh, Tacoma. Oh. So, you know, um, that's my, so that, yeah, so that, that's the top 10 markets, okay. Um, so, Jack is wrong. (laughs) <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I I didn't, I didn't realize that the Dallas Fort Worth was that high on the list, mm-hmm. but you know it is. So you know. Uh, but anyway, so I mean, I I just I just feel sorry for parents who got to send kids off to school, and with all that it costs, and you know, I mean, the day the day the kid's born, you got to start thinking about saving for their education. Am I right? Uh, uh, Brian, yep. Kevin, and Kevin. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm, already, I'm already looking at the grandkids. But you yeah, see, I Brian's guess. new to this game. You're you, you <laughs> by now. You've been dr- bled dry of every penny you've had sending kids to college, right, Kevin? For dance, for dance. Yeah, and I remind her all the time. <laughs> I said, "You're not going to buy another car, so you better be good. Stop crying." Yeah, exactly. Y- yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure you will do anything for Adrian that you possibly could to make her a well-rounded individual and make sure that she has all the tools she needs to get along in this world. Yeah, yeah. and I think it's, I mean, Kevin, Kevin definitely knows, but it's like, you know, my friend, a couple of my friends have kids that are into music or something mm-hmm. and they want it, you know? So it's like, my God, sometimes I talk to my friends and say, geez, you know, sometimes you're just so thankful that your kids want to do something and they're into it. You don't have to push them to do something. Well, it's so. good when kids know what they want to do with their life. Yeah, you know, yeah. especially things like music and so on are things that people pretty much figure out they want to do in life early. Yeah. Okay. But there are a lot of kids out there being pressured to figure out what they're going to do for the rest of their life. They have no idea. You know, yeah. they haven't lived enough life yet. And no matter what they study for, by the time they get to be 30, they'll wind up doing something else. So. You know, I mean, I don't think, I, I think, quite frankly, I think that when a kid graduates from high school, they should be allowed, and this, I know this sounds weird, but they should be paid for, pay, paid by the government to go okay. on a four-year vacation anywhere in the world they want to go. As long as they're out of the house. You, you know, <laughs> and, no, no and, and be able to see the world and to be able to enjoy the world and then when they hit 22, figure out what the hell they're going to do with their life. Yep. You know? Well, a lot of them are taking these, what they call gap years. Really? Yeah, they'll they'll take a year or a two off and then try and get back into it. But that's hard because they got to get back into it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them don't. A lot of them will stay at home and all of a sudden they're back downstairs and hanging out and then they got to try and get a job and they don't want to get a job and it's hard to get them remotivated. Yeah. But, so and, and I, yeah. That's the hard part. <clears throat> yeah. and, and I said this before, you know, we, we live across the street from a school, but we lived across the street from another middle school. And on Saturdays, you know, all these Asian kids were going to school. They had, they had classes for all these Asian kids were going to school on a Saturday. So if you take mm-hmm. a couple years off, trust me, there's a lot of a lot of other cultures that will not do that and they're going to jump into all these jobs and then when these kids get ready, okay, I've had my 2 years off, I'm ready to look for a job, they're not going to get a job because all these other kids that have been working on Saturdays and, you know, going to school on Saturdays and not taking a break, the the Chinese, you're not going to let them, they're not going to take a break. The Indian, nope. they're not going to take a break. They'll nope. keep going. Yeah. Yeah, so that, well, that's the part, that's the hard part is the competition that's going to be out there for these kids yeah. now. That's why I feel sorry for because, like I said, I think I had some good breaks and I really pushed myself, and I got lucky a lot of times. But 
I just can't imagine well, trying to be out I, there. I just think, and in your yeah. area is really rough because you, you go up to Cupertino and it's even more so. Yeah, I keep thinking that it's brutal it, it, up there. Ages eighteen to twenty-two, you should just be allowed to see the world because the problem is number one, nobody knows whether you're going to live to be over sixty-five, but you know when you're old, you're not as capable of traveling as you were when you were younger. Boy, I'm sure finding that out. Yeah, and it would be very nice if you were able to, you know, travel when you're younger and get that out of the way. You know, and then if, when you're older, if you can still do it, go ahead and do it. But, you know, at 83, I don't know how easy it's going to be for me to travel the world, especially with this knee now, you know. The knee will get better. You, it, you were talking about January. By January, you should be fine. Yeah. Well, I want it better now, man. This thing's in, I'm in pain. I think the pain will go away in a couple of weeks, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it'll go away in a couple of weeks. Uh, Dr. Allen said so. Okay, uh, well, I hope you're right, Dr. <laughs> Allen. Do you mind? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Charlene. Not a real doctor. Yes, sir. Oh. Sure. Now, Alex, I remember, um, like, like, I went to the hospital, and then you were sorry, right? Because you were there for, like, hour. Piece, right what so what? you're not going to get this because i'm worried about you now that you know maybe you hurt yourself and you should have somebody look at it but maybe you're right if you're okay and well you i to, mean you know and uh, oh the, oh yeah you know, yeah the arnica will help with the bruising i know what that is yeah yeah well i i just know i i figure i'm gonna probably go to a doctor i'm gonna go to a sports doctor about this so the same ones that i went to when it broke before i think it's the same meniscus to be honest with you it feels oh. exactly like oh. the same thing and i just trashed it when i fell the other day oh. yeah mm -hmm. um, so it's time for me to go take care of it you know but i will but uh um i can't do it yet because mandy's coming into town Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Mandy. Wait, how did you manage that? <laughs> hmm? She's in Georgia, right? Yeah, she's coming up to see her daughter, and she said, "I'd like to see you guys." Oh, and I said, said, "Fine." Oops. She's going to sit right next to me while I'm doing the show. And, and then uh, Don Gill is going to be in bed with your wife. You're going to be in bed with my wife. Yeah, on the, that'd be a great show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm interested in meeting Don Giller. I don't know if you people know who Don Giller is, uh, but Don Giller, mm -hmm. if you ever go online and you see videos of David Letterman's show, about 90% of them are David, da Don Giller put them up all these years. And he is... Oh, really? That's they come. Hmm? Oh, okay. Yeah, he's one I've of the... I've seen those videos. Yeah, he's but one of the funniest people I've... Would you agree? You hear him a lot of times, Brian, on the show. Yeah, yeah. The the thing I like about his videos is like when the Pee Wee Herman, when Pee Wee Herman passed away, I mean, uh, you could see the progression when he first was on David Letterman's show, and then as he he was talking about he was going to make a movie, and then he was the next time he was uh, promoting the movie, and then the next time was after the movie uh, was yeah, already premiered yeah. and stuff like that. And went so you could see. But you know, Ruben's uh, uh, confidence level going up with that character, you know, and it's, it's it's pretty cool to see those type of things. Well, he's a great uh, a great archivist. I mean, he yeah. he's good at that. And yet, the Letterman people all of a sudden decided they wanted to make money off that footage, so now they he can't put up any new stuff. Otherwise, they'll tell him to stop. He can mm -hmm. still have all the old stuff he did, uh, but and he works for the Letterman people now. Mm. consulting them on where to find certain footage because he knows where everything is over the years he's Ooh, collected man. every single letterman show but he's one of the funniest people i've bumped into i really like and i've never met him personally so i'm looking forward to it if in fact he does come over for lunch so oh alex i thought maybe you met him at check fest or something or what but you didn't he wasn't at check fest no no he didn't go to check fest no Oh. No, uh, although he knew Shecky and he was, you know, good friends with Shecky, uh, but uh, now nah, I guess he didn't want to go because there are too many Letterman people there, and he didn't want to get oh, involved yeah, yeah. in the politics of all of that and so on. So, hmm. you know, 
But, you know, uh, God, how long has it been since Shecky died? God, he died what, in February? Three months. February. Yeah. Wow, well, it's six months already. Yeah. Wow. I think it's six months yeah. already. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, time, time goes by quickly when you're older, too. Well, it just, it just you know, um, it, it, it also goes by faster when you don't admit to yourself that it happened. Yeah. You know, I, I, it's like the old saying goes, uh, and I said it about Shecky, you know, Rick Sheckman died, but I don't have to believe it if I don't want to. You know, so. Yeah, the same, the same thing that you were talking about on the other shows mm -hmm. about when you're watching, I forget what you said, you're watching and you think R you're watching with R Shecky. Riverdale. Yeah. River, they, yeah. They have their last show. They, they, they ended this. The uh, they, this was going to be their last season anyway, no matter what happened with, with uh, the WB. Uh, so last night they ran the last episode, and I watched it with Shecky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I I remember that story when I was watching, uh, uh, you know the the boat the boat one the down under whatever that one is. Well, yeah, yeah, he loved that show. Yeah. Low yeah, Jack. I Low watched Jack. that one. Jack. I, yeah, below deck. So I, I have that on my DVR, recording all three of those different shows, and and so I was watching it the other day, and when I turned that on, I remember he used to like that show. So then I thought of the story where you're saying like well, we I particularly liked uh, Below Deck Mediterranean. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, and that was a show that I was watching. Right, it was kind of like my secret. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Uh, program that I didn't want anybody else to know I was watching. And one day I admitted to Shecky that I was watching, and he says. Oh, I watch that every week. I love that show. <laughs> yeah. He also All liked Ma Master Chef Australia. That was his other. Oh, really? Yeah, that was his other uh, thing. But uh, no, they ran the last uh, episode of Riverdale this week, and I got to tell you, it's the best last episode of any series I've ever seen. It is just mm -hmm. phenomenal. They did some a spectacular. They had a spectacular year this year, and I don't know if any of you watched that show, but it was all the Archie and Veronica thing. But they did it differently. Okay, they didn't. They did it more seriously than they would normally do it. And the last episode starts off in 1986. All the, all the Riverdale stuff takes place in the 50s, mm -hmm. and Betty is 86 years old and she's dying <laughs> and she wants to go back to Riverdale mm. and so somehow she becomes younger and is able to say goodbye to all these people and we find out what happened to them in the later life because obviously if she's the last one still alive everybody died along the way and it's not mm. sad that they died it's just time passes and they died and it is just one of the best episodes I've ever seen and the most satisfying episodes I've ever seen for a, uh, for a show, uh, for a series. And it was, I, w I was glad it was that good. Okay. Yeah. Um, very good show this year. Dealt with so all. With, hmm? with these writers on strike, is that affecting like uh, all the shows that we watch, all these new ones like... Uh, uh, Oh my God! Was it Among Us? Not Among Us. Uh, the Last of Us oh. and all that stuff. Well, they won't be making new a new Last of Us until the strike until is over. Yeah, until yeah. the strike is over, and they can't write it, and they can't uh, uh, they can't do it. You know. Yeah. But uh, uh, you know, the the strike will eventually be over. I think in about five years. So you know, it'll be okay. Uh, but anyway, hey, listen, I'm playing the theme. I have to say that because they can't hear it. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kevin, for being here tonight. You're always a pleasure, as is uh, Brian, as is uh, our good friend Alan and Charlene. It's very nice of you to join in this evening. This is a very light night on Thursdays. I don't know why, and so thank you for helping us out, okay? Uh, everybody, why don't you uh, kind of give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you ladies and gentlemen night, there no. they go yeah that's our that's our citizen panel for tonight let me see oh there they go they're disappearing so i better i better get in here okay jack bishop is next he comes here right now over most of this same cabinet he'll be doing a uh, 
a citizen panel, and the number you call for that citizen panel is you go on to Skype, and it's GabNet Live, GabNet Live. I'll see you again. Let's see here. We're back on again tomorrow night, uh, 10.30. I'm trying to stall here because i got some time left. Oh, well, let Jack go on early. Uh, that's it for tonight. We'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.